Hello, this video is part of my series on building a product site with Beaver Thema. Here I'm taking a look at how we can add a pop-up product inquiry form to the site, but it's also an overview of a great free plugin by the wonderful Doug Bell Chamber called WPD Beaver Pop-Ups. Doug did a video on his own plugin, but it's been updated since, and I just think too few people know about this great plugin. So I'm gonna come off camera and show you around it. So I'm here on the WPD Beaver Pop-Ups page on the WordPress repository. And as you can see here, there are only at the time of recording, just over 600 active installations, which tells me that this is really underused. And if you look at the ratings, you can see those that do use it like it very much. And I was taking a look at my review here and it tells me that I've been using it for one year and three months. And I've got it on many client sites and I'm really happy with it. It's been really reliable and so easy to use that clients have been able to change things themselves. I had one issue, which is an edge case situation. I think it was something to do with an update in Beaver Thema but Doug was on it straight away and fixed it, I think within about a day. So I rolled back to the old version and corrected it and then he fixed it within a day and everything's been fine since then. So the big selling point about it is that it's made to work with Beaver Builder. So you can use the Beaver Builder interface to create your pop-ups with drag and drop and you can use any of the modules that are in Beaver Builder or any of the third party modules or combine those and there are four types of triggers for those pop-ups. We've got scroll depth, which can be set in percentage. So as you're scrolling down, the pop-up can appear. And we've got two types of modes. We've got modal, which will kind of center in the middle, and although we can position it a little bit. And we've got some fly outs where they can fly out from any of the four corners of the page. So typically on that first one, it's scroll down on blog posts and it'll appear on the right. And I'll show you that in a moment. We have the familiar entrance, timed entrance pop-up that just appears at whatever time we set it. We've got exit intent. If you're not familiar with that, it's where when the visitor moves towards their back button, the pop-up will appear. And my favorite, this is the one I use the most, that you can attach it to a button. And so on click, the pop-up will appear and I use that often for forms and I'm going to show you an example of that and that will work with Beaver Builder buttons, the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder and Power Pack buttons as well. It works with the Beaver Builder subscribe form as well which is really handy. So let me go over to my site where I can show you this in action. So once you've installed the plugin and activated you'll get this added to the menu and if you go over to all pop-ups, you can go here and add a new one. And let me just show you that. And that invites you to launch the page builder. I'm gonna move back and we'll go into one that I've already created and we'll take the short cut and go here to go straight into the page builder. So here we are. So this is very familiar. All the usual Beaver Builder stuff is here. It starts off with a row already for you that's blank and you just drag in what you need. But what we'll need to look at here is the pop-up options. So let me talk you through those. So as mentioned, there are two pop-up types. We've got modal and we've got fly out. Let me just move to fly out because you'll see some extra options. Here we are, so we can set the X and Y positions. So this is going to the right bottom, but I can move it to the center or to the left and move up to the top there. I'm gonna go back to modal. Then we can set our overlay to either color or an image. I've got color here and you can see here, we've got an alpha slider here. So if we don't wanna see that background, we can just take that right down to the bottom and you're going to see the page below, but we can set the variations there on how much of the page we want to see and what color. We can decide here whether we want to allow the visitor to close the pop-up by clicking just to the overlay, which I prefer, but you can reduce that so they're forced to click on the actual close icon. And we can, if you like, hide that as well. So we could leave somebody stuck with their pop-up for all time, but uh, I guess we're not gonna wanna do that. So I'm not gonna hide this. 
we can decide whether to block the browser scroll. Now you can't see that here because we're not going any depth on this. Sometimes that's a good idea, particularly with the button pop-ups. So everything doesn't kind of jerk to the right. So let's leave that. We've got the opportunity to style our icon so we can set the size of this responsively, set the icon color. Here we can decide its position to be relative to the overlay, which I don't think you'll see. I think you have to refresh to see this because it's not built into Beaver Builder yet. So this would disappear off to the top right of the screen if I set it relative to the overlay, but I've got it relative to the pop-up here. I'm not sure when Doug did his video, this is something he may have added later, so it might not have been included there. And we get some control over this so we can set the distance from the top and the right of our pop-up over here, which I've done with five pixels. We've got, this is something new, certainly, that you can now just set this to full if we want rather than pixels. So let me just go to that. There we are, that's setting that uh, the full width, but I usually set this to some pixels. We can determine our height for it or just leave it blank for auto. We can add some border radius. Now, I'm not sure if that works so well when you've got an image background because I think you can kind of see the corners on it, but it definitely is going to work fine if you're using color. And we can add, if we like, some box shadow, and then we've got all these options to position and, and make the depth of that and the blur of that shadow as we like it. I'm going to leave that to no. And we've got some animation for our pop-ups. Now I like to keep things simple. So I go for the simple zoom in, zoom out, which you hardly notice, but it is so much better than the pop-up just appearing. That is kind of a, a sharp shock, but it doesn't really appear like animation. But some of these other ones, ta-da, you're probably familiar with. It really grabs attention if you need that or flip. And something else I'm sure that has been added since Doug did his original video is that you're now able to disable the pop-ups on various devices. Now, this is perhaps relevant since Google, I think maybe about a year ago, decided that they might, I don't know if this is the correct word, penalize people who are having sort of pop-ups on mobiles. Now, it depends on the type of pop-ups, but kind of advertising to folks on your mobile is not kind of the thing to do. So you can just disable this by clicking on it. And it says it here, but I, still it confused me for a while. You just need to press control and click again if you want to re-enable it. So that's all the options there. The rest I don't need to explain here. You just drag in what you like and I'm using this subscribe module over here. So let's go back to where we were and take a look at the other options. So the other thing that we need to check out here is the pop-up manager. And if I go into here, we can see the options. Now I'll talk about the button last in this video, but here we can set the other things. So we can decide which pop-ups are appearing on entrance, exit and scroll on this manager. And we can set it easily to go site-wise. So all of the pages that's gonna happen on all, on all of those. And it's a really easy thing to do. Let's go for entrance and add a pop-up for entrance. We just go and select the pop-up we want. We determine how many seconds we want to leave it before that pop-up appears. We can decide how many times a visitor is going to see that pop-up. So this is all cookie based. So this is assuming that they don't clear out their cookies. But if I set this to once, they're only going to see this pop-up one time only. And I, I guess it's going to work if you've got them site wide. So you won't pester somebody too much. And you can also with the advanced options here, you can determine when that cookie is dropped on open or close, which I guess is gonna make a difference to your numbers that you place here. So if I, I don't know how that works, actually I haven't tested it. I'm assuming if it went once and you put it to drop on close, it may show another time. I'm not sure, anyway. Uh, that's something perhaps to check out, but it's fairly easy to use. And let me just delete that because I don't want something site-wide, so I could just delete that. We can add it to post types, so we can have all of our posts, all of our pages. This picks up on what's available, so it knows that we've got templates in there, and it knows that I've also created a custom post type of products as well, so we can 
assign them there and also we can assign them to single page and post which I've done for this example here so I'm going to take a look at this so I've got one on entrance here for cake number eight so I'm going to go over to my products and let's just take a look this one was set to delay for two seconds so let's see if that works just load it one two yeah it's that's about right so and that's the one we've been looking at so I can just click on the outside okay let's take a look at the next one which is on exit so that's my exit intent which is on blog post number two I've kept it simple so there we are that's my post and I move over to my back button and ha there we are there's the pop-up encouraging me to come back and make use of their 20% discount okay next one is the on scroll newsletter a different pop-up I've used here let me go back to the blog and we shall go to post three and this should appear as I'm scrolling down what did I, I set a depth of about 40 percent so is it mm, ah yeah there we are that's about 40 percent and I got a bit of animation on that one so it's kind of flying in from the top I'm sure I could have moved that to the bottom but I'm sure you're familiar with this okay so that's all the examples now let me move on to why I was intended to do this video to show you something with the product site so this is where the buttons come in let me go over to one of my products over here and this is what I wanted to do I wanted to have people be able to inquire about any of the products and personalize it so I'm using Viva Thema for all of these products. So it's one template being applied to all of the different products, but I'm able to personalize it. And if somebody fills this in, they're going to get information telling them that it's an inquiry about cake three. So I just wanted to show how to do that. I'm mean, using gravity forms in this case. So let me go first into our product singular template here so we can see what I've done. And I can show you what happens with the Beaver pop-ups plugin for buttons. So once that's installed, you'll find that under click actions, you've got this extra pop-up and you'll need to go and select the pop-up by typing in the name of it. Now that pop-up is actually called product inquiry. So it's found that and that's it. We just have to save that. Then that's going to set off that pop-up. Now, what I wanted to do was personalize this with this one template. And as you can see, it's showing uh, cake eight here. So I did that by using field connectors in Beaver Thema, really easy thing to do. So there's my static content inquire about, and then there's my short code over here, which I can just add very simply by going over to the post title and inserting that. So there we are, I've got two of that and I don't want that so I'm going to get rid of the one that's not needed okay and that's great and then it's going to output the post name that I've given this which is the same as the product name in this case okay which is exactly the same as what I was doing over here but I let it take over the whole module there right let me come out of here so we'll need to talk now about the form because what we need to do is to make sure that the person receiving this knows it's the product so we're going to have to use a hidden field that contains information telling them what the post title is so they know what someone's inquired about and we can do that really I think with any sensible plugin for WordPress should be able to do this and I'm using gravity forms but I did do a little bit of checking and certainly these popular ones will have hidden fields there I checked that out a contact form is a free one so if you don't have the budget to buy one of these uh, forms you can use that I'm not entirely sure it certainly has hidden fields there but you may need to use another free plugin to be able to add in the right tags to be able to put in the product title or the post title as it is ninja forms of course has it Candera forms has it they're called magic tags where you add them I'm not entirely sure if that's on the free version I think it is and I think also 
they have the similar thing with WP Forms, which has a free or light version, and they have something called Smart Tags. I think that may work on their free version, but you'll need to check it out. And uh, Formidable Forms, of course, has that, but they are, I think, entirely pro. But I'm using Gravity Forms. So let me just show you what I set up. So I'll go over to my tab where I've got my forms up. So I go in, there's my product inquiry form. And over here we have under our standard fields hidden. I bring this in and as you can see, I've just already laid it out. You go to the advanced tab and here we have a drop down with Gravity Forms to pick the the uh, post title or page title here. I could also add another hidden field and with that I could, this might make it easier for some folks to embed the URL that this email came from so they could just click through and see the product if they weren't familiar with all of the products that they have. So that might help a client in certain circumstances and that was pretty much all I needed to say. Let me just mentioned that on the pop-up itself I'd use exactly the same technique on the title so when we see uh, I can't show you this I have to go into the product I'm in the template there let me just go and click this one as you can see I've included it here but that's doing exactly the same as I've done on the button I put in the static content inquire about and then I put that short code via Thema connections to add it in there to personalize that. Okay, so I think that's me done on this video. I hope this was useful to someone. If it was, then please give me a thumbs up on YouTube because it really helps me. And if you like these kind of videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you have a great day and I hope to speak to you soon. It's goodbye for me. Goodbye.